Hey, I don't want to take a negative tone in this video. I'm going to try to keep things positive. I am talking about products that let me down, but in some cases it was just me that bought the wrong thing. And I'm looking out for you guys telling you my experience so you don't waste your hard earned money on the same mistake. First thing is the CZ720. This gun is terrible. It just is. This is the CZ720 G2 Gen 2. Um, this is a youth model shotgun. And I bought it for my kids because I really wanted to get them into shotgun shooting and I wanted to have something that fit them nicely. It's a nice balance of enough weight to mitigate the recoil without being so heavy that they can't, you know, shoulder it properly. But the problem is I started shooting this and my 11 year old son, shooting under supervision, YouTube, was shooting this and I see him with two fingers in the trigger guard. And I'm like, who taught you to shoot like that, son? And he physically couldn't pull the trigger with, with just one finger because it's so heavy. This has an eight and a half pound trigger and a youth model gun just really let me down there. Now, a shotgun really shouldn't have a pound and a half trigger. That's not at all normal, but eight and a half pounds for a youth model really made it unusable to try to teach my kids to shoot well. And so my hard earned money was wasted on this guy. But I should say that I do really like some CZ firearms. Just this one let me down. Today's video is brought to you by Established Titles. It allows you to get at least one dedicated square foot of land on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, complete with your own unique plot number. Now, according to Scottish custom, you could rightfully be called a Lord or Lady. Check out my certificate with the title Lord James Harmer. So picture this, you put on a kilt for the amazing draft, of course, head off on a Scottish fox hunt with your hounds through the countryside, then you stop by a restaurant for some haggis, of course. Plunk down your credit card, boom, right there it says Lord or Lady in your name. Go back on the airplane, same thing. Your dating profile makes you look like a boss, specifically a Scottish boss. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will all be close together within walking distance. So we can all become lords and ladies and build our backfire kingdom. Plus, Established Titles works with One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation by planting a tree for each order. If you're like me and you kind of forget until the last minute, it's a perfect last minute gift idea. Established Titles is actually running a massive sale. Plus, if you use the code BACKFIRE, you can get an additional 10% off. So go to establishedtitles.com slash backfire to get your gifts and support Support the channel. Up next is kind of a category. So this is Killick Camouflage. This is the Sportsman's Warehouse brand. And this let me down because some of the pieces were decent quality and other pieces, like I tried one of their puffies that was just trash. I mean, there were loose threads. It just didn't feel like the, the some of the pockets of the puffy were just kind of sagging that didn't have enough down in them and stuff. It just wasn't for me. But I wanna talk more broadly about camo because, man, if you go to the Kuyu and Sitka stuff, it's crazy expensive, crazy expensive. I did buy the Sitka for me and Kuyu for my kids. We go out a lot, but really I bought it for the performance of the fabrics, which is awesome. But you really don't need to spend 250 bucks on pants to go hunting. And so it's just an area where I, I just want everybody to exercise caution. Don't get caught in the marketing. You're deer hunting, you're wearing an orange cap and vest anyway. And so who cares what the camo pattern is, right? Now, if you're turkey hunting, coyote hunting, or bow hunting, ah, suddenly it may matter a lot. But for a lot of gun hunting, you really don't need to go crazy and you can find inexpensive pieces that work well one that I might point out to you is Scree that I've recommended to several personal friends of mine. Uh, the owner of the company is actually a new friend um, that you might check out, see if they have prices that more fit what you're looking for, but still having quality products. But you really got to ask yourself, do you actually even need camo or could you just wear a nice outdoor pant and things that will perform well, but don't have the markup of camouflage? Up next is hearing protection. I have a bucket of hearing protection, trying all kinds of different electronic ear pro for shooting. And very few of them honestly work well enough to use regularly. 
I recently got this one, Isotune Sport. The company sent it to me to hopefully get my recommendation. I just can't quite recommend it. It's awesome that it's in this AirPods style case that charges your buds and things like that. And the first time I used it, I was like, yes, this is awesome. But the next time I went, there was just a slight breeze and I could barely even hear. It was driving me insane. And it was connecting and disconnecting to my phone. It just wasn't having all the bugs worked out. The best ear pro that I have ever used is Axel, the GS Extreme. I'll have a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. Use it, don't use it, don't care. Um, this is the one that I've used the most. Lately, I haven't used it because I lost mine. I took it out of the case and I cannot find it. It's driving me crazy because I really have liked these. They do great in the wind. They have sufficient protection for me and they've been reliable. Battery lasts a long time. They have been great. But honestly, just get some that you like and, and work well for you. Even if that's just cheap silicone buds, if you don't really need to be talking to people, get a good pair of ear pro because you only get one set of ears. Next, going to a hunting product is the Jet Boil. I do regret buying a Jet Boil. I've had kind of weird stuff with mine. One, the igniter has never worked reliably on this thing. You gotta bring matches as well, which I think I always would for safety reasons, but I like that being my backup and this wasn't reliable. Also, I was in some weird wind one day and it melted. A significant portion of my jet boil still works, but eh. The other thing I feel like is, man, these things are over 150 bucks and you can get this little Coleman thing for, what is this, $25? And they do the same thing. They both boil your water. And so I get jet boil. I think it's cool. It's a great pot. I like the pot, but I think I would have just gone with something cheaper. Do I really need to spend that much to boil water? Probably not. I think I got sucked into the marketing. Probably wasn't worth it for me, but I know a lot of you guys love them. If you do, great. Just wasn't worth the money for me. Some of you knew this was gonna be in the video when you saw the title. It's the Mossberg Patriot. I've covered this in several videos. This Mossberg Patriot in 308 was not even close to accurate. Like we're talking pan sized accuracy at hundred yards, just very, very inconsistent. I got a second copy of the Mossberg Patriot in 308. It also does not shoot well, it, not one, one MOA certainly, but better than this one at least. I want to not just bash the Mossberg Patriot here, but I do just want to exercise a little bit of caution in that very, very cheap category of rifles. You do have to be careful there. A gun is going to last over a hundred years. They're going to last so long. And so for a lot of people, I think it probably would be worth it to buy once and cry once. Just spend a little bit more, not even that much more. But in my opinion, a rifle in the $750, $800 price point was probably going to, you're going to be happy with it for many, 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 many years. And a lot of guns in that $450, $500 price point, you're going to kind of outgrow it pretty quick or you'll get tired of some of the shortcomings. So I love cheap guns. They're awesome. But if you, you know, really only have the money to get one, I might kind of look at what price point you're going for to make sure you aren't buying multiple guns, which will be only more expensive over time. The Swagger Bipod is something that I thought for sure I was going to like. This is a bipod, you know, kind of really for coyote, coyote hunting. Um, turkey, I guess you could use it for too. The idea is to be able to move around as an animal is coming in close, which you would need for coyote hunting. So I got this thing. It's kind of huge on your gun, this whole thing under the stock of your gun. And I just felt like I was trying to balance on a pogo stick to use this. I just wasn't getting any stability from this. I'm told that they have a newer generation that's not quite so crazy Gumby. But this one definitely let me down. It was an expensive product and I used it one time or two and I was like, this just does not work for me. I need more stability than this. I don't, I think it fixes a problem that doesn't exist because if you just get shooting sticks or something that's rigid and you're trying to move over here to shoot, well, one, you can just pan and two, you can just drag the legs along the dirt so you can already move. You don't have to be balancing on these springs for your gun. You know, a bipod's for stability and I just didn't feel like this did it. 
But I have to say, I mean, a lot of people love this product. So if it's for you, great. It just wasn't for me. I bought this Everly stock. I think this is called the Just One backpack. And I really like the innovation of it. When I first used it, I was like, this is so cool. Because what it does is it has kind of a bat wing design, I think is what they call it. So you can unzip this and it becomes a way bigger, uh, a much bigger backpack if you're going on a longer hunt and then zip it up smaller for a you know shorter hunt where you don't need as much gear. It also has their scabbard so you can put your rifle right in here and it comes down the bottom of it. So I was really excited about this pack when I got it. But you know what? It's sat unused every time since I used it the first time for a couple reasons. Once, this scabbard is too short, really, if you're using a suppressor because it just, it just needs to be a little bit longer. The gun sticks way too high up the top if you're using a suppressor. And then the other thing is I just feel like one hunting pack is probably a little unrealistic if you're doing as much hunting as I am anyway because I feel like you kind of need a day pack and then you need a several day pack. And I just found that this one was a little bit too much of a compromise to try to just have one. You have the weight of a pack for several days, but then you're just going on one. It's a well-constructed pack, but it, in the end just wasn't something that I ended up using. I feel bad including this one on a list of products I regret buying because it's a really cool product. This is the Vortex Fury 5000 AB binoculars. They're awesome because it also has a rangefinder built in. I, I really like them and at the same time I feel like, ah, this is not the solution that I want long term. So binoculars, if you get a really good pair of binoculars, they're going to last you your whole life. And optics just don't change that much year to year. And so you don't have to keep getting the new model of optics unless you're getting caught into the marketing. And so I really feel like it's a good idea to buy it. Most you can spend on binoculars, get some good ones, have it for your whole life. And I don't feel like this is it because the rangefinder requires some of the light to be cut out here to go to the rangefinder. It's just not quite as sharp, not quite as bright as you would normally get of binoculars of the same price. The rangefinder does work really well. I think a rangefinder works better with the 10x zoom because you can, you know, feel precise where you're where you're lasering to get it. And I like that it has the ballistics built in for your gun, but in the end, I don't know, it feels like too much of a comp compromise in the optical quality. I don't feel like I have as much control over the ballistics. I feel like I get more from my app and I would rather print a card that I have more control over. So I can see why some people would love this. I even do like it, but I do feel like eh, it's probably something that I'm going to replace. I just don't feel like it's the ultimate solution for me yet. The next two products are in that similar category where it's not a bad product. It just wasn't the right one for the problem I was trying to solve. So this is the Bald Eagle Rest. It's really intended for bench rest shooters. You have all kinds of crazy control over that gun so you can get it perfectly dead. The reason that I bought this is for testing guns because I want to be able to shoot crazy accurate so that I can give a good number to you guys about the accuracy. And this was just the wrong product for that. It's great for a bench rest shooter, but for somebody like me who's trying to test a bunch of hunting rifles, it requires too much tweaking and stuff to get working with each specific gun getting it sized in. And there are a lot of adjustments and things that you gotta have screws for and stuff. It, it's a bench rest thing. It's not really for testing a bunch of hunting rifles. And so that's one that I wanna mention is to just get your setup once of how you're going to shoot a rifle. You know, are you gonna get a great bipod for that rifle and a rear bag? That's probably the best setup for me. You know, get one front bag if you wanna shoot that way, but get a good setup so you can shoot prone, accuracy test, sight in your rifles and stick with it. You don't need a thousand products to accomplish that. Last is the lab radar. It's very expensive and when it's working well, oh man, it is awesome. So nice to know precise speeds of your loads. If you're doing any reloading, you gotta have a chronograph. 
but I feel like they really need a version 2 of the lab radar. The usability is so bizarre. Like, okay, you have a button here that has a computer icon, right? So if you had never used this, you'd say, okay, that's for like interface to my computer. No, that's like the menu button, right? And then you're like, oh, but this also, it's like a menu button, right? And then you have this check mark that often you need for, it's not just saying, okay, it brings up a different menu of things. It's just, it bends the mind, the UI, and I even use it a lot. And still sometimes I'm like, now what? What button does that do? It just doesn't follow UI standards. And so it makes it more difficult to use. Also, it's been very picky. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it just, I can't get it to record speeds. It doesn't work well with suppressors. It doesn't work well with muzzle loaders. And so it is very finicky. But when it works, it's amazing the technology that it has. Also the batteries, you put a gazillion double A's in there and it dies pretty quick. It probably needs an internal battery, but pretty much everybody who uses them will end up using an external battery on this, which is what I do. And people buy an accessory here so you can actually aim it. It's hard to aim, it's gotta be precisely pointed at where the target is. There are just enough usability things that make it frustrating, but the technology is amazing. So that's my list of a few products that I regret buying. What are some of the things that you regret buying so you can save me some money? I'd love to see it in the comments.